This is my rebuttal of 10 questions to ask your biology teacher about evolution. These questions come from Icons of Evolution, a book by Jonathan Wells, which is pro-intelligent design. These 10 questions are all anti-evolution straw men, which anyone with a high school education in evolution would easily see glaring flaws in. But if you don't have a high school level of education, which is quite possible since he's targeting uh, freshman high school students with this book, you would be tricked into thinking that there are glaring holes in the more than 130 year old theory of evolution, which there are not. Question 1. Origin of life. Why do textbooks claim that the 1953 Miller-Urey experiment shows how life's building blocks may have formed on the early earth when conditions on the early earth were probably nothing like those used in the experiment and the origin of life remains a mystery. <clears throat> okay, first of all, the Miller-Urey experiment is not really related to evolution. It's closer related to organic chemistry and abiogenesis. Second of all, this experiment was performed 55 years ago. Don't you think that in all that time people have had a chance to repeat the experiment and try it under different conditions. What he did was he took water, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen, put them in this setup that I have on the screen, ran some electricity and heat through it, and after two weeks, he produced many organic compounds, including amino acids. And in fact, these ex this experiment was repeated several times. In 1961, Joan Otto found amino acids could be made with hydrogen cyanide and ammonia. Some of the organic compounds created included adenine, which is a nucleotide base. And Jeffrey Botta repeated the experiment more recently. Uh, he found that carbon dioxide and nitrogen can create nitrites, which destroy amino acids. But these nitrites are neutralized by iron and carbonate which would have been common on the early earth. He repeated the experiment with carbon and nitrogen in the atmosphere and with some iron and carbonates in the, in the fluid solution and the result was again very rich in amino acids. Even more, even more recently in 2006 another experiment showed that a thick organic haze may have blanketed the early earth which would have seeded all the oceans around the planet with the stuff of life allowing it to flourish. My point is that these experiments were done several times and they work under a wide variety of conditions as long as there's no oxygen in the atmosphere at the time because oxygen literally burns the organic molecules as they're made. But we all know that the early atmosphere did not contain the oxygen. Oxygen was introduced with photosynthetic organisms which came billions of years later. Question 2. Darwin's Tree of Life. Why don't textbooks discuss the Cambrian Explosion, in which all major animal groups appear together in the fossil record, fully formed, instead of branching from a common ancestor, thus contradicting the evolutionary tree of life? Oh boy, the Cambrian Explosion. Darwin himself said that it could be a, a brick wall to his theory of evolution, but now we know a lot more about it. For example, the so-called explosion lasted 70 to 80 million years. That's a, that is a long time for reproducing life forms. I mean, 70 to 80 million years is nothing in geological time, but it's forever to pretty much anything that were to evolve. It would be like taking a picture of cars crossing the finish line at a NASCAR race with an old-fashioned camera that takes 30 seconds to resolve a photo. And besides, there are many creatures that lived during the Cambrian that are extinct now, like my friend here, the Opabinia. And yes, many groups did appear at this time, such as mollusks, crustaceans, worms, fish and other chordates, the echinoderms, but where were the insects? 
and the mammals and the amphibians and the reptiles and the vascular plants including trees besides there are there's an entire rich fossil layer that came before the Cambrian period this is the Atticarian period and there's all kinds of strange and unique life forms from this time which are unlike anything that lived today. Although the so-called Edicarian fauna largely went extinct once burrowing animals became commonplace in the beginning of the so-called Cambrian explosion. Number three, homology. Why do textbooks define homology as similarity due to common ancestry then claim that it is evidence for common ancestry, a circular argument masquerading as scientific evidence. Okay, this one really irritated me because he doesn't apparently know what a circular argument is. The definition of homology came from analyzing actual similar characteristics in living things and then writing up the definition based on observed evidence. They did not make and they did not make up the definition out of thin air and then and then use that definition to I don't even know what he's going for. I mean that, I don't know. I mean a circular argument is like saying the Bible is true because God exists and God exists because it says so in the Bible. That's what a circular argument is. I don't even know what he's getting at here. Well, anyway, from this slide I have up here, uh, I'll, I'll, by the way, all my images I found by simple Google searches for the keywords, uh, you can see that these are all uh, mammalian forelimbs. There's an orangutan on the left, a horse on the right, and in between you have a hound, a sweet, a sh something that I can't really pronounce, a reed and a taper. I don't know what those middle two are. I can't really read that print. But, as you can see, they all have two bones in their forelimb, which connect to the, to the wrist bones, which connect to the finger bones, and, you know, hate to sound like I'm singing that little song, but there you go. I mean, you can see the structures in the bones, which show fusions, in the case of like the horse instead of having four small finger bones it just has one really thick one which is caused by all four of them fusing together into one and the homologous structures are you know you you see them i didn't make them up from the definition they can be seen by comparing anatomy i wish i could have found a nice picture showing the bat's wing next to the human hand because a bat's wing really looks like a human hand except with longer fingers and that's because chiropterans are actually closely related to primates um, but yes it's not a circular argument it's based off of evidence like everything else okay I'm gonna leave it at these three for now and come back with another video later on at which will rebuke more and uh, I hope you have had an informative session here.